Peacock here again, and again you don't have to see my ugly face. As I said in my uh, Glock cleaning uh, video, I like to take the slide apart and uh, work on it every now and then, and uh, I'm going to do a, try to do a fairly short video on that. The uh, I'm not going to do a, a take away uh, take apart the frame uh, uh, video today, but you got to be in the mood to do that one. The, the slide, though, in, in some ways, I think, is the most neglected part of uh, a lot of people's Glocks. Uh, partly because they don't know how to take it apart. They never have. And uh, they figure it's fine the way it is. Okay? But I think that is one of the most important things to do periodically. Let's take this one apart again. And here's what I do. Again, this is what I do. And taking apart the frame and taking apart the slide is not as simple, obviously, as field stripping the gun. You uh, have to hold your mouth right a couple of times. You've got to get something. I use the old, this is actually the Glock tool I've had for, forever. You've got to get up there. And there's a little cup there you've got to push down on. I don't know. You can go on the internet and get the instructions for doing this. I'll get this up as close as I can to you. Okay, you've got to take the pressure off the striker. So if you can see what I'm doing. I'm pushing down on that, and I've got it. I've got the pressure off now. Now I'm not pushing down on the striker handle. There, I'm pushing down on that cup. It's underneath that. You'll see it move. You'll feel it move. All right. This little, any little punch or this uh, Glock tool will work. All right. Now I've seen Glock armors do this at GSSF matches, and they're just amazing. Uh, I'm not quite that fast, and don't try to be. So I put pressure down on that, and I get a little baby sharp screwdriver or something, and I get the back plate started off there if you can see that and then I'll even get a bigger one and kind of get down in there and just bring it off. okay so it's about right all right so there's the the back plate you gotta get the pressure off that see what you're doing is you're pushing down on uh, let's get up here where you can see you're pushing down on that I don't know if you can see that and how that'll come across in the video but okay I'm gonna push down on it okay so I've got to get the pressure off of it that's what I'm doing by putting the punch up under there all right, so got that off. It's kind of like a 1911. Then the firing pin, the striker, as it's called with the Glock, comes out. Hopefully you've done this before, but I suspect some of you have not. All right. Now, this one should be clean because it hadn't been that long ago that I actually did this. This is an important gun to me. And you have the, the plunger tube here, the extractor put, that puts pressure on the extractor, so pull it out. You'll see it disappear. If you haven't had this apart, you see that little piece of metal pushing against the back of the extractor there. That's what this is, a little plunger tube. So I pull that out and remember which way it goes in, the springs on the back. All right. And actually take out the extractor. You need to push on the little uh, firing pin block pin and the extractor will come out. All right. And then the firing pin block and spring will come out looks like that okay there's a little spring stuck in it it'll you can pull that out or you can just leave it in there depending how dirty things are and this slides apart totally and I know you can't see up in there because there's no light probably but that's the firing pin channel or the striker channel alright the striker channel that is a very important part to keep clean and free of oil I've heard some horror stories about people letting dirt accumulate in there to the point where the firing pin or the striker does not hit the firing pin it's blocked and it doesn't uh, strike the primer hard enough and so you end up with a click when you might have needed a bang right so what I do and I have done this recently although I have fired the gun uh, since I've done it you know, probably a couple hundred times I don't know what I do is I, uh, I get the old alcohol out again again denatured alcohol would probably be better and you may have some better idea just something that won't leave grease It's the main thing. Alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I get through a lot of rubbing alcohol in the workshop here, I have to say. Just put it on my hands, get the oil off or whatever. Uh, so I, uh, and I, here's something again, you'll hear people advise against. So I always like to bring out the disclaimers, but uh, I go ahead and use Q-tips, half for about 20 years. So I've got some alcohol in this, this Q-tip and I'm just rubbing around up in there and in my firing pin channel or my striker channel, you know. We old school guys still think of them as firing pins, but uh, it's a striker channel. And you notice there's a little baby bit of carbon on that, but it's uh, pretty clean. 
main thing is you don't want grit in there. I remember back in my early glocking days when I thought that if a little oil is good, a lot of oil is better. And on one of my very first glocks, 17, I had a little too much oil on the slide. And I started getting all this powder residue up in these areas and uh, couldn't understand. I actually had a malfunction. It was so bad. And I, I learned uh, the hard way. But you want to keep that clean and free of uh, little bitty pieces of brass can accumulate in there over a period of years up in that striker channel if you never take it apart. And uh, you might not have any trouble, though. I know with my first glocks... You know, I, I didn't take them apart. I wasn't even sure how to for a while. And uh, the crazy things just go on ticking. You know, they, uh, they, uh, they take care of us even when we don't take care of them sometimes. But uh, it's simple enough as you can see. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So I'm just drying it out now. It was clean, of course. Now, if you've not done yours and you have a gun you fired a few thousand times, you might end up with, you know, a little bit of crud in there. So go ahead and give it a good cleaning scrub it whatever you want to I use uh, q-tips you might have some better a solution as well just as long as it doesn't leave residue and uh, it's not oily okay so my firing pin channel I spent a lot of time on it I know it was in pretty good shape already but I uh, I really spend the time on it I also stick uh, the same thing down in the there where the uh, the firing pin block was you know all that area and make sure I've got that cleaned out. You notice it's not cruddy. Now that will get cruddy. If I had not done this recently, I'd be pulling some serious crud out. There's probably some in here somewhere as it is because I have fired it. Okay, not too bad. Get it from every anywhere you can stick something there. You know, from every angle. Uh, you know, stick a Q-tip or a fold up a pipe cleaner, whatever you want to do, just to make sure you get all the crud out of there. All right. And then speaking of that, you definitely want to use a pipe cleaner. What could be better for cleaning out that uh, plunger tube channel, you know, for the, uh, it's called what, the extractor plunger, I think. And I'll put a little alcohol on the tip of that and run that uh, up through there. Yeah. Okay, and you see that's pretty clean too. Yours probably won't be. If you've never done this, uh, yours won't be clean. And you'll be glad you did this. When you take all that apart and you see the crud, yours won't fall apart possibly like mine did, just fall out. Uh, you'll have to pull it out of there because there's so much carbon buildup and, and crud. And so, if you're uh, if you mess with guns much, you're a bit of a tinker yourself. So I'm not telling you anything. You know, once you get it apart, you can see where it needs cleaning, or where it would be wise to to go in there with something, and you know, just look through there and figure out where all the holes are and where everything fits, and just make sure it's all clean. Okay. There's a little hole there. I think that little hole was actually for uh, uh, letting carbon deposits or maybe brass fall out. It's a nifty little hole there right under the, where the striker hits. So keep that, make sure that's clean. Again, I'm not using oil. I'm just using dry stuff here or alcohol soaked pipe cleaners and Q-tips. And as I look in there, it would be good. I don't have my flashlight with me. I would recommend having a, one of your good flashlights with you and just kind of look in there and make sure you don't have any residue you haven't left any cotton from a cotton swab or from a pipe cleaner in there okay and I, I can see well enough that there's there's nothing in there it's clean so sometimes I'll put it by the fan make sure it's nice and dry it's a really hot day and that alcohol is drying very 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 quickly so I feel safe now I know that that's clean I look at my striker I see it's clean I can't resist wiping it off anyway, but it's perfectly clean. There's not a lot of residue in that. You can, you can see that striker. That striker pin has to go through that little bitty hole, and you don't want anything in the way. My extractor, I see just a little bit of carbon residue. Should be. I fired it a few times. I think I'll hit it with some. Since I have it out, I'll go ahead and hit it with some alcohol here. Wipe it off. Don't want oil touching that now. I, I have I do soak that I have soaked that in oil I think in ballastol it doesn't matter as long as I get all of it off and then I'll soak it in alcohol as well I always finish up with alcohol if it's one of these critical areas like that hopefully I'm holding this stuff in the right place I don't know let's see I'll never win an Academy Award uh, as you all know but uh, so yeah I feel a little bit better you know even about the extractor got it nice and clean don't see any dirt or carbon buildup on the plunger tube 
looks good. Everything else looks fine. The little uh, firing pin block, striker block, uh, looks good. Uh, yeah, one could argue there's just a tad film of powder residue on that or uh, carbon. I'll just go ahead and clean it while I have it out here. Okay. Nice thing about this is these darn Glocks will function even when they're dirty. Uh, you can even neglect them and they'll generally work just fine. So, so you really know you're you're uh, you're going to have a reliable gun if you actually go the extra mile and clean it better than it has to be. Now, it's time to put it back together. I have no clue how to do that. Well, maybe I do. Let's see. Okay, I think I've got to get the extractor lined up here and hold my mouth right. Uh, where the uh, the plunger tube goes in with the spring in the back. Uh, extractor always looks like you're putting it in wrong or you always feel like you are there now with the extractor you, you got to get the uh, take the uh, firing the striker block little doodad with the spring on it get it back up in that hole and you got to depress it in order to get the extractor in right and then it puts a little pressure on the extractor so the extractor is in there now it's held okay so just remember that the, the striker block, firing pin block, called on a Colt uh, 1911, striker block are there, and, uh, and, and the extractor go in at the same time. And then I've put the, uh, put the plunger tube back in there that puts pressure on the extractor. And now I need to put the striker back in. Gun is not much use without a firing pin, in this case a striker. So you see, that's what I was taking the pressure off of. I'm going to push on that with a screwdriver, if you can see this or not, where everything is black. But see, I push down on that. So that's what I'm doing when I take it apart initially. I'm reaching in here and getting a hold of it under here, and I'm taking some of the pressure off to get that back plate off. All right? So I'm really ready to put the, this plate back on, aren't I? Now, in order to do that, I've got, again, I've got to take some of the pressure off that. What I normally do... Uh, is you want to get it started of course as I just push that down with something there that will be kind of out of the way maybe I can get around here where you're not blocking everything in my big hands let me drop it all and go flying okay I got it started now this plunger tube needs to go in too okay there we go snapped into place so everything should be in working order yep looks great yeah, if you want to make sure your uh, striker is is free, and it's not blocked, or you've done something wrong, I don't know what it would be. You can depress that uh, striker block and then shake your slide, and that'll let you know that the, the striker is, is is okay. It's free, okay, not locked up or anything. So my slide is back together and ready to go back on the gun. And the nice thing about the old Glocks is uh, it's hard to rust one. You know, it's kind of uh, hot and humid today and I'm really sweaty here uh, but I'll wipe it off a little bit but generally don't have to worry much about these crazy things rusting if I was working on a, a blue Colt 1911 or a 1911 I'd be more concerned about that back together and he's ready to go all he needs is a magazine full of bullets See? So make sure it's operating you got everything in, in place okay. One other tip while I'm doing this, if you have ever, uh, I don't know, had a brain fade, I have done this, I know of twice in my life, and the first time I wasn't sure what to do, I don't know, I, I don't know what I was thinking, I had my, uh, I'll show you what I was doing, you can probably imagine pretty easily me not thinking, but I don't know what I was doing really, I, I had the frame in my hand and I, I don't know I was just looking and maybe I'd oiled it or something I was just kind of seeing if it was going to slide on there smoothly anyway I went ahead and put the slide on the frame without the barrel or the the mainspring so I just you know well, I'll take it right back well no it wouldn't come right back off uh, so don't ever do that and I could not get it off I had to take this way back I had to take a Glock to a gun shop and ask them about it I really felt stupid uh, if they knew how I could get that off, or if they had a gun, some Glock guy there that knew, you know, what I, I didn't want to force it and damage it, but I, I just could not get the slide back off. And uh, I did this not long ago, just messing around, like I say. 
Well, I discovered that if you just go ahead and, and take the slide apart, you know, take the plate off and take everything out of there, it, it frees it up and it'll come off. So if you ever do something stupid like that, maybe something uh, that you can remember, uh, just take the slide apart like I just did while it's on there and it'll free it up. All right, there may be an easier way I'm not aware of. So gun is working order. And that slide is definitely clean because that's uh, twice in the last month that I've done that. I highly advise you do that. Again, if you've got a Glock you've had for a good while and you've not done that and you fired it uh, several thousand rounds worth, I'll bet you you find some new bitty pieces of brass in that striker channel. You, know, you might even find more dirt in there in that uh, extractor area and all that that uh, you'll be glad you got out. All right. And on another day when I'm uh, up to it, I'll, uh, I'll take that frame apart and show you how to do that. But that won't be anytime really soon, probably. All right. So y'all have a good day. And that's Hickok signing off. And I'll clean up my mess here and maybe go shoot this thing. Y'all take care.